be talking about the lost art of being present, which is something I've come to realize over the past couple of months. Um, more specifically, I'm going to be talking about how the future planning and past obsessions can affect our lives more than we think they truly should. How many of you have actually found yourself planning your next task while in the middle of another one? Like right now, I know Samuel could be thinking about what he wants to eat right now, right after, now, right after this. Or if he feels like, what, how do I get home safely after this on the scooter? Or thinking about just going through old photos or just like looking through past videos and just feeling the nostalgia and some sort of like pain of regret instead of just enjoying the moment that you're in right now. All these, these two habits I talked about are a lot more common than you'd actually think. In our like very fast paced world where everything's just surrounded by technology and all of our daily lives we're surrounded basically by a phone, understanding the importance of being present can really drastically improve our mental well-being and relationships as a whole. Throughout these past couple months, I'd say even before researching this project, I feel like I've experienced firsthand the difference of my quality of life just by practicing mindfulness. And then through this project, I've done some extensive research that I'd love to share with you guys today. So with that, well, okay, one of them got cut off, but today I'll explore Basically, how being present it becomes just a lost art by examining three things um, the impact of future planning, the obsession with the past, and some, I'll give you guys some strategies to cultivate mindfulness in just our daily lives. Oh, wait. Oh, that was weird. Okay. So, first thing uh, future planning. It's the relentless focus on planning for the future, I think, that overshadows the present moment. A study by Harvard University found that people spend 47% of their waking hours just thinking about something other than what they're always currently doing. In my head, this constant distraction can just lead to increased stress and decreased happiness because you're always looking for the future. You're never once thinking about where your life is at the moment, where it can be just right now, we're in a very air-conditioned room <laughs> where there's electricity. Because people always just plan for the future because you always want to be safe in this world. You'd like to be comfortable. It's a natural human instinct. Planning is always essential, don't get me wrong. All of us plan, it's good, that's how you know what you're gonna do. But an overemphasis can create this anxiety for events that may never even happen sometimes. Some examples I'd include would be just overscheduling activities and you're just missing out on some spontaneous joy. Just for the chance, I'll get more to it actually later into the presentation once I once I get towards the end. So stay with me on that, those two topics. And while planning is always good, like I said, relying solely on it leaves you kind of unprepared for just when life gives you a hard reality check. Life is un unpredictable. It's just how it is. You can be the most perfect person and one thing can always go wrong. It's unfortunate, but I feel like as humans, we need to learn to adapt. The inability to adapt can cause significant stress when plans just go AWOL. When you truly don't know what to do when you thought you had everything planned out, it's a feeling no one wants to go through. But I feel like we all need to learn how to go through it at some point. So while planning planning the, on your future and cloud that while future planning can cloud our present, our fixation also on the past also contributes to this issue. Which I'll be talking about next. About how Obsessing over past experiences prevents us from fully engaging into the current moment. A psychologist by the name of Susan Nolan Hokusima, she did a research back in 2000 that shows that ruminating on your past is linked directly to depression and anxiety. Because in her study, it's all, the way the mind works, you will always fantasize better about things when you've already experienced it. And basically to us right now, that's just saying fantasy will always be reality. Sucks to say, that's just how it is. So for me, when I think of this, replaying past mistakes in my mind hinder my ability to enjoy new experiences. My example is gonna be, I love to ski. My family loves to ski, but when I first started, I couldn't even stand up, right? I, I was slow, I kept falling, I would run into people all the time. And in my head, when I think, past, think through this, I'm just thinking, man, I feel bad because people have to wait for me, I'm being a hindrance all these bad things when in reality if i never got back on the skis to get better 
I would never experience how truly wonderful it is to actually enjoy skiing just with people, the speed, the beauty of the mountain. And that all of that goodness would not have happened if I kept just thinking and not doing this new thing. Keep pursuing, keep bettering myself. But if I was still stuck in that mindset where, oh, I shouldn't do this from a hinder others, I'll never grow. Now, over analysis though too, like I said on past events, can lead to regret and prevent us from moving forward. The strategy I use was self-compassion and positive memories. I switched my memories from thinking, okay, I'm enjoying the mountains. I'm here with people that truly love me and are somewhat patient with me on the mountain. And with self-compassion, I gave myself a break that everyone goes through this at some point. You're new to something, you're gonna make mistakes. Now to address these challenges, I'll be talking about some mindfulness activities that can help us reclaim being present. Techniques like meditation and mindful breathing can reduce stress and improve focus by a study by Kabat-Zinn in 1994. Incorporating small practice such as mindful eating and walking can make a significant difference just for how it wires our brain. And with these, it also, with doing those small things, it reduces stress and improves focus. Now, some other practices or ideas I'd give is a digital detox. Like I mentioned early on in the speech, our world is surrounded by technology now. It's just how it is. It's the way we're progressing. But now it's come to a point where even our attention spans are actually lower than a goldfish in certain studies, which is absolutely crazy in my eyes. But I can definitely see it, as I would be the same thing, going through Instagram, going through TikTok, and just always swiping, waiting for me to be entertained. Now, some ways that actually will help you, or in my case, what I would do, I've always put my phone just out of reach, so I'll never constantly be checking for a notification on my hip. And what this did for me, helped me reduce distractions. I was able to do stuff more focused. It helped me connect with my surroundings. I actually was able to look around and just notice how wonderful the world was instead of going through a screen. And also, it actually helped me with my relationships because there was no longer that that little barrier between me and one other person. Like it could be right here with me and you and Ellen. If I was talking to you, how would you think about this whole time? Not good. And another thing I also mentioned was spontaneous. Sometimes, be, embrace spontaneity. Be, be okay with canceling these, some plans you have. Enjoy life as it should. The reason I say this is because, and there's something, that, there's something special just with the unknown. And I say this because, think about all the people that love horror films, horror houses. I don't like them. I don't know about any of you guys. But they always go back to it. Even though they know it's scary, they're gonna be scary, they're gonna scream, but they always go back. It's that feeling of the unknown that's gonna surprise them. It does something to them that they wanna keep going back. It's like a feeling a little hole of like, ooh, you know? And with that also comes exploring more outside your comfort zone. Because with spontaneity, that means you can go anywhere. Just say, hey, call off work, Go, go to a mountain you want to hike for one time, just so you can see the beauty and how God's creations were or how the world is supposed to be. There's just a small joy in just the unknown that I feel like a lot of people just don't understand. Now for my conclusion, I'm going back over the three points. That we often lose sight of the present by focusing too much on the future and how obsessing over the past can prevent us from enjoying the now. And I gave you guys some mindfulness practices that we can use to reclaim by balancing our attention between the past, future, and present. As we all leave today, as we say our final goodbye to this class, consider putting your phone down during the next meal or taking a few deep breaths before you're starting your next task. By doing so, you might rediscover the richness of these moments that you could be missing. Remember, while planning is important, there's no doubt about it, don't let it be all you do. Embrace the unexpected and don't be afraid to cancel plans just to go out and see the world.